Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, hello and welcome to my channel. And today we will be painting a landscape. You know, landscape paintings are my go-to paintings whenever I, I just want to paint um, to relax or I just want to paint a beautiful scene because landscapes are really, really pleasing to the eyes and also fun to, to paint. So all the colors that I'll be mentioning in, the, in this video will be listed in the description box below so that you can refer to them easily. And, okay, we will be backgrounding first the canvas paper that I'm using. I'm using an 11 by 14 inch canvas paper, okay, for acrylics. And let's begin now. Okay, so the colors will be more of neutral, muted, because we're painting natural subject, okay? So you can use any brush, any brush, <laughs> any brush for the sketch part of this painting. For the sketch, I'll be using my blue. Okay, again, the colors that will be mentioned will be listed in the description box below. Okay, so I'm gonna draw first uh, where the horizon is gonna go. It will be right on top of the midsection of my canvas paper. Now, if you're having a hard time drawing a straight line, it doesn't really, uh, it's not really a skill. It's more of just confidence when you draw a straight line. And of course, it all depends on the, on the size of your canvas. If it's a bigger canvas, it will be really, really hard for you to, do, to draw a straight line um, free-handedly simply because uh, the way you're going to, control your hand is much longer than when you are doing on a smaller canvas paper just like mine you know it's just so easy and short so it will be not too much of a challenge for me to draw a straight line anyway if you're having a hard time doing a straight line especially when defining the horizon line you can use a ruler you can use a tape you know I really don't suggest them I mean I really don't suggest doing them every single time but for purposes of convenience you may do so the reason why i don't really suggest you use them is because it doesn't teach you how to do it on your own i mean you always depend on the existence of these things to help you out it, it's not it's not bad but for learning purposes i really want it you know old school Okay, so I, I hope some people really appreciate that type of learning skill. All right, so now that we've already defined where the horizon is going to go, I'm going to go and define where the land is going to go. So there will be a boat, right? And it's docked on the land portion. And this will be the land. All right, this will be the land. And since we're already at it, I'm going to use my burnt umber to already um, underpaint the, the land portion. I'm going to mix with raw umber and black just to, you know, add more depth to the land portion. But a lot of the colors will be more of a brown, brownie color. And make sure as well that the land is not um very uh what do you call that very strict make it an even because this is nature it's not really um cemented or commercialized or anything like that so make sure that you also create some bumps and um some natural um uh, inden indentations I sound like a science book. Those natural indentations on the surface of the land. Okay, this is basically the underpainting for that land portion. We will be doing the detailing later, but you know it's good that we already block the colors because once the underpainting is done, everything is highlighting and everything is just detailing, which is the fun in games when it comes to painting, at least for me, okay? All right, now that we've already underpainted this part, I'm gonna go and um, uh, underpaint the water portion. The water will be neutral. 
it will not be blue just like the horizon line that we did here so i'm gonna wash my brush out i'm gonna use actually a new brush a clean brush not literally new but i mean clean brush i'm gonna wet it out i mean wet the brush and i'm gonna use again blue but this time i'll be mixing it with white okay i'm, uh, I'm gonna get my white So using blue and white, I'll be adding a little bit of black to that so that it's more of the gray, gray, like bluish, grayish color. So I'm going to use this color. Okay, perfect. I'm going to use this color to start underpainting. You may also start, you know, thinning the what they call the horizon line because it was very thick i'm gonna mute it even more i want it more gray i want it more gray than blue so the most dominant color will be gray so i'm gonna color the water area with this color again make it muted because we're still in the underpainting portion uh, it's actually, uh, what time is it now? It's 10 p.m. here in Chicago, and I'm painting. Not yet sleeping. I just had my work out this morning. Uh, I, I really enjoyed my workout. I love working out. I just love working out. Anyway, so this is, is the underpainting for the water. Okay. We will be going back to this later, definitely, because this is just the underpainting, very preliminary to the actual uh, or to the final look of this painting. All right, now I'm going to do a similar color, similar to the colors of the water when it comes to painting the sky. All right, but it will be more bright, okay, more bright. So I'm going to use the same gray color, but more blue. Okay, more blue and I'm gonna do the same thing over the sky portion but to be honest a lot of the right portion of the horizon of the sky will be covered in green color to suggest some leaves of trees but we want to make sure as well that the, the sky color is still there so that the negative spaces will be the sky color We will be also doing some reflections later. My canvas paper is moving because it's a canvas pad. You know, it's not really glued to my um, my working area. Okay, just like that, and then let's allow it for us to dry. Now let's go back to where we started. Okay, it keeps on moving. I'm so sorry about that. So let's go back to where we started, and that is the land portion, okay? Because I think this is pretty much dry. So let's go back to that. Okay. I'm going to get um, my brush. We'll be using our palette knife to create more texture on the ground. Now using my burnt umber, okay, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to that. And of course, white. And I'm going to use this color to, okay, this is too yellow. Okay, I'm going to get my burnt sienna, or you can also use brown red. I don't like the burnt umber. Burnt umber is more of it's more on the yellow side, so we don't want that. Okay, we want something on the red side, and we can use the burnt sienna. Okay, I'll be using this to apply some 
burnt sienna. Okay, again, I'm going to get white. Okay, yeah, like this color. Actually, I'm going to get, I'm going to add a little bit of black just to tone it down. Let me try. All right, perfect. This is the color that I want. It's like light brown, but um, muted. So I'm going to apply this color. Over here. Okay, just like that. This is again very, very preliminary. Don't think too much for now. I'm gonna get my black. We will also be creating some sort of shadowing. Okay, I'm actually starting to do that now. And I'm going to darken this area. All right, just like this. Okay, I'm going to allow this first to dry. Let's go back to the water part. Okay, we will be doing some distant trees along the horizon line. Okay, so along here, yeah, along this area. But I'll be using green. Okay, I'll be using green and I'm going to mute that by adding black. And a little bit of blue. And of course, white. Okay, more black. All right. And I'm going to use this color. Let's create some patterns. And you know what? In all honesty, a lot of this, even if we're doing this distant trees, we will be uh, glazing it later with some white and gray color to suggest um, fog. So just do as I do. Again, this is very just suggestive of what's, um, what may be seen from the distance, but it's not really very detailed. Again, we will be glazing this later. So don't mm, think that this will be like this. It's not really the final look. It's very preliminary. Again, we're doing it step by step. Right. Okay, perfect. Okay, we already have this. Okay, now we're going to do some reflections. Now again, I don't want you to be discouraged simply because it doesn't make sense at the moment. So I'm going to do some vertical brush strokes on the water part. Okay.
I'm using the remaining paints on my paintbrush. So you can see here. And then I'm going to just tap, okay, vertically on the canvas. This is actually um, very fun to do. All right. Okay, now okay, I'm going to use the remaining paints on the rest of the space that you see on the water area. We don't want some dark colors here because it's the water reflections. All right. Just like that. I'm going to allow that first to dry before we do the glazing. Again, just trust me on this one. I know that it looks um, uh, like a child's drawing. Because uh, it lacks control at the moment. It looks like it lacks control, right? But um, this will make sense later. Just trust me. Let's just wait for the paints to dry. All right. Perfect. Now I'm going to wash my brush out or I'm just going to get a new brush because we'll be, we'll be using a different color now. I'm going to get my blue color. I'm going to wet my brush. I'm going to get my blue and white. And then we're going to create a little bit of um, sky reflections right here. You can add more white just to make it more. Um, if you have cerulean blue, that's good. That's uh, perfect. You don't have to mix primary blue and white. If you have cerulean blue, you can definitely use that. And I'm going to do the same thing here because, you know, the reflections should be consistent or no, the, yeah, the reflection should be consistent with what is being reflected. Okay. I'm not really worried too much about the right side because again, as I told you earlier, it will be covered in green colors later. For the foliage of the trees on the right side that's why i'm not really worrying too much about this area but i want this color to okay my canvas just keeps on moving i know that some of you will suggest that i tape it i don't want to tape it because it's a this is a cloth so it's not gonna work i'm gonna get my white Using white, I'm going to add, okay, that's too much white, but I'm going to use my hands and spreading it to really suggest sky colors. And of course, right here. Again, we want to be consistent. Right, just like that. And now, since I'm already, I already have this white color, I'm going to get some gray, gray color. But I'm going to dry brush this time. I'm going to remove the excess water from my paintbrush. When you dry brush, you make sure that it's just damp. It's not super, super dry, dry. 
but it should be damp. Wet enough for the paint to spread on the canvas, but dry enough for it to create some soft patterns. So I'm going to use this dry brushing technique around or along the horizon line. I'm just going to go circular, okay? just like so. Just enjoy this procedure um, because uh, I, I love this procedure. It's just allowing your paintbrush to do the job for you. <laughs> All right, just go circular. If you need to dab it on again on your palette, just do so. Make sure that it's damp for dry brushing. Now let's go high up. Let's go above the horizon line. Again, just create some circular patterns. This will suggest funk. Okay. Don't cover everything, but we want to make sure that it is foggy from the distance. This is really, really fun. I kind of miss this technique. Okay, I'm also removing that sketch line that we had. Again, get some white, okay? Maybe a little brighter this time. And we're going to, again, continue doing the fog. But this time, the middle section will appear more um, bright. Again, you don't want to cover the reflections, uh, like everything in there. You just want to make sure that it's foggy, it's covered in fog. Right, the sky. Okay, we will go back to that area if we have to, but all right, so that's very, very preliminary. I'm gonna get my light blue color, so I'm gonna mix my white and blue, and let's just make some light blue colors right above the horizon line or yeah just along this area but then again try to make it soft you don't want to draw strict um straight line and soften everything all right just like that Some blue colors. Okay. Now I want to get back to my black and green color. And um, I'm just going to make some dark markings very randomly so that uh, we suggest that there are still some trees in the background that are more uh, seen than compared to, I mean, compared to others. Perspective, we're talking about perspective. Some will be very, very dark. Some are covered in fog, but make sure that there are still some parts of the trees that are showing. The shape must be there. Just like this. Again, you don't want to cover everything in fog because that's just not very realistic. When it's foggy, you can still see things, but not as clearly, okay? 
So it's the same thing with painting. Um, it's the same thing. So I'm going to make some, I'm going to redo the reflections part, darkening some areas. Okay, all right, so let's move on. I'm going to get my black. Okay, now let's create some trees. This will be covered, okay. You can do any shape of the tree trunk that you want, but this is great. Make them a little bit crooked so that, you know, it looks more uh natural you know the one that you really see in nature you know that's what i really like about um realistic painting it can never lie to you i mean you can change it but there's no guess guessing game it's what it is it is what it is Another tree here. The boat will be right here, okay? okay? So as you go farther, make the tree trunk thinner, look thinner because of perspective. Okay, I'm going to make it a little more small. And then you can add some um, tree branches. You can use a thinner um, brush for this one, but I'm just gonna go with whatever I'm holding, whatever I'm holding on, because uh, I don't want to get another brush. Just like that. Okay. All right. Maybe I'm going to get another brush simply because um, I want to change the size of the tree trunk. Okay. I'm going to get another brush, a small one. So using a small brush, I'm just going to do the same thing. It's just that I'm using a small brush. As to the branches, you can do whatever it is that you want. Remember that um, this is a natural subject. No particular pattern for the for the branches because that would be um, not consistent with natural looking patterns, and you won't enjoy the process if I tell you to go a certain way. When in fact we're painting nature, so we don't want any. Uh, our paintings will all look different. Yeah, similar, yeah, I understand. But as to the exact location of everything, we will all have different um, um, paintings. But, of course, based on one tutorial. So I'm going to go and create some small branches. I was supposed to, I was about to say branches. I'm hungry, guys. Okay, just like that. Maybe I'm going to fix this part of the tree. Okay. Now let's sketch the boat. 
Okay, so the boat will be here. It's docked right here. Okay. I'm going to link in the description box below um, some of my boat painting tutorials or all of my painting tutorials that have boats. Okay, so that's the boat that is docked right there. And I'm going to use black. To, since I'm already at it, I'm just going to color it black as the underpainting and also to separate it already from the view. Okay, just like that. And I'm going to allow this first to dry before we highlight. Let's go back to the trees that need some highlighting. Okay, I'm going to allow this first to dry. Okay, for the trees, I'm going to get some brown and white and brown and white. Yeah, that's it. Brown and white and a lot of white actually and black. And using that color, I'm going to go and highlight the left side of the trees okay, that we'll be doing. I'll be definitely using a palette knife later just to give it more highlights. So when I do the highlights, I don't really do strict lines. As you can see here, almost dry brushing. I'm just allowing the brush to touch the to touch the canvas, I'm not really dragging it very firmly on the canvas. Just allowing it to do the job for me. Okay, just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to use more white. I'm not really washing my brush. I'm just adding more white, okay? So now get your pure white. Use the same brush that you use for the highlights. But this time, um, we're, we're going to highlight the most, um, all that. The leftmost part of the trees. All right, just like that. Okay, now let's add some leaves because this tree is just leafless. Okay, so I'm going to add some trees 
And for the trees, we'll be, um, okay, we will be doing, or we will be using muted green. Okay, so I'm going to use my green here. You can add black or brown, depends on what you want. But I'm going to mix brown and green and black just to get some muted green colors. And I'm just going to start dabbing it on the tree part, on the tree trunks. The purpose of these dark colors is to already suggest that Okay, we don't want to do this last. We want to do the dark portion first before we proceed to doing some highlights. That's just a uh, one way of efficient, uh, yeah, efficiently doing things. Again, just dab. Okay, I'm going to get some brown. Again, we want to make sure that even if this is, these are trees, okay, we still want to make want to make sure that brown colors are appearing on the leaves because um, you know leaves are not absolutely green, pure green. I mean, they can, but um, the likelihood of getting pure green uh, is very unlikely. So I'm gonna use black to add more depth. To add more depth to this area. Okay, we're just starting. And I call this the underpainting for the leaves because um, we're just starting with the leaves. No detailing yet. It's all dark, you can tell. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna wash my brush out. I'm gonna use a smaller brush for some smaller leaves right on the left side. So, okay, just like that. Smaller, smaller leaves. Okay, I'm going to dab on to my brown. Again, just to be consistent with the colors of nature. Right, just like that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Let's create some more detailing. All right. Now using black, I'm just going to make it a little more dark because I think I applied so much highlight on the left side of each trees. Okay, going to get my white. Well, it's not really white, but you can see that colors will be mixing, but I'm just going to highlight the boat. Okay, my brush is quite thick, that's why. Okay. All right, just like that. Then I'm going to get some gray color. I'm going to apply this gray color on the left side of the boat. I'm going to get a little bit of hints of green just to add some I'm going to get some blue color. And then that. Okay, just like that. I'm going to add a little bit of hint of blue. Just like that. And while we're at it, let's add some shadow suggestion. Mm -hmm. like that. All right. Okay, we should push out. I'm going to get my fan brush. I'm going to get my green and yellow to create some yellow green color. I'm going to add a little bit of brown to that so that it's more muted. Again, we want to mute every single color that we see on this painting. And I'm just going to use my fan brush to create some suggestions of lighter colored leaves. And I'm just going to use and go in different directions. To suggest more fluffiness of the leaves. I'm going to add more yellow if I want to. Okay, I'm going to get my yellow and white. Mm -hmm. 
is to add more um, highlights. Okay, using black, more depth. Using some greens. Okay, and then some yellows. Also right here, some grasses. And then I'm going to get my black. I'm going to suggest some grasses. And I'm going to highlight this grassy. So. Okay, and then some light greens. And some depth. Okay. I'm gonna get my white, okay? Just to make sure that there are some highlights. Right. Now I'm going to use my palette knife. Okay, we're definitely going to highlight the boat later, but for now, let's just leave it like that. Okay, I'm going to use my palette knife. I'm going to get the, I mean, I'm going to get some white and brown. 
you can add also black just to mute the color and i'm gonna start dragging some some of that color on the land portion to make it look more um land to make it look more landy <laughs> okay i'm just gonna drag also here it's not dragging too much maybe my palette knife is not that um i don't know why it's like this so i'm just gonna scratch i'm just gonna drag not scratch this light browny color on the land portion okay this will suggest roughness and evenness and of course the natural look that we want to get oops that's too much brown Right. I'm gonna get my black. I'm just gonna dab on some detailing. These are grasses that are not really receiving enough light for it to be highlighted. Then I'm gonna use my black. It's actually almost 11 p.m. and I cannot believe that I can hear that. Is that a fire truck or something? That's so weird. Okay, I'm going to add more bluey color. The inside, the interior design of the boat. Okay, make it more bright blue since it's the highlighted portion. Just like that. All right. Gonna get some white. You see white? I'm just gonna drag some of that white colors. Actually, some blue colors are mixing. some white brownie colors
Okay, I'm going to get my black. This will be the shadowy portion. And we're going to lighten it a bit. It's not too, let's not make the shadow too harsh. Okay, just like that, and then maybe I'm going to get a more pointy brush just for us to be able to do some highlighting. I'm going to get a more pointy brush and go back to the boats. Um, like the mouth of the boat. Just highlight it. I'm using pure white. Great. I'm going to highlight a bit. Okay. And also, again, the left side should be more highlighted. Okay, let me check. Actually, nice. Okay, I'm going to water down some white. All right, and then I'm going to get again my gray colors. Don't forget to always highlight the left side. Mm 
also this the tree trunks or the branches also do not forget to highlight not all of them but make sure that some of the branches are highlighted so i'm just gonna apply some white branches to suggest highlighted branches You're going to use some bluish, grayish colors. Now, it's actually not bluish, grayish color, but because of light effects, colors appear to be like that, okay? Okay, now using black. Okay, just like that. And I'm going to apply a little bit of brownie colors. You want your bow to look more old. Okay. You don't want a brand new bow. Okay. It, it should look a little bit rugged and. Yeah. Okay. Now let's do some gray colors. I'm going to mix my white and black. Then using some grays.
Let's apply that. Just like that. And then I'm going to add some suggestion of bumps on the tree branches. Bumps here and there. You want to make sure that this is more of a shadow. Okay, I'm going to get my palette knife again. I'm going to dab onto my white. And I'm going to apply some tiny highlights. Okay. This is very, um, actually you can do away with this step. But I don't want to do away with this step. Because um, it's something I know that can affect the look of my... Um, painting. Okay. Apply some gray color. All right, now using a clean brush, maybe this one, I'm going to dab onto my white, pure white. Let me check. Okay. Actually, the background has already gone, you know, it's gone away. So I'm going to make some more dry brushing. Vertical. Right, just like that.
if you can add a little bit of like a hint of green here and there just to make your land more um natural In the grasses. Okay, just like that. And I'm going to create small openings around, I mean, along the, along, I mean, around the sky area. So I'm just going to use my blue and white. And then using white, I'm just going to highlight the bottom portion.
All right, just like that. Any more highlights? Let me check. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna make some like brownie colors. So using my brown, I'm gonna make the boat more brown so that it's more showing. All right, just like that. We kind of want the boat to, to be shown. All right. I'm going to get more black. I'm using more black. I'm gonna darken a little bit, okay? The tree part. Just like that. And then some more palette knife. Mm -hmm. Just like this. in white.
over here. So just more detailing actually. And then you can add more greens. Just to make it look more natural. Just gonna add more foliage. Okay, and then I'm going to add more depth right here. Okay, let's see. Okay.
Okay, let me check. I'm going to darken it first. Add a little bit of greeny color on the boat. Then using black, water down, start re-sketching the shadow. Mm. I'm going to add some white colors. Right, so I'm just detailing actually. It was a long, quiet moment. <laughs> because I am more focused now on detailing. So I just keep redoing what we've been doing. And um, there's nothing really new here. I'm just adding more details. And the same procedure, the same thing. So the purpose of dark colors is to provide depth, especially that we're doing a lot of light here. Okay, again, I'm just going to use more white. More white for the fog. Okay. It's like this. Mm -hmm. like that. All right, so I think I'm going to sign this now. Okay, I'm going to sign this now. And I'll be using light colors. I'm just combining every color that I have on my palette. And I'm going to sign right here. Okay, see? Okay. I'm going to add more highlights.
Okay. This is great. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this one. And I hope you paint along with me. And yeah, it's almost 11.35 p.m. here. Not yet sleepy, but I hope you enjoy the painting tutorial. And yeah, see you in my next one, guys. Bye. Mm -hmm. Love you.